Hi everyone, let's talk about gain. I'm not talking about the weight you gained over the holidays, I'm talking about camera gain. You know, the camera setting that only a few of us really understand. Well today I'm going to take some of the mystery out of it. We are going to talk about gain, HDR versus Unity gain. This is Amy of Amy Astro. I hope you like this video and share it with your Astro friends. Please subscribe. Leave me a comment below. Ask a question or suggestions of what you would like to see next. You too can have a personalized video just for you. Follow me on Facebook as Amy Astro, where there you can get details on how to order my 2020 calendar. So let's get started. Hi everyone. I've always been curious as to which camera gain and offset settings were the best to use. I follow a lot of folks online and I see a popular choice was Unity Gain, which is a gain of 139 and an offset of 21. Their raw data always looked brighter than mine. I was using a version of the HDR settings with a gain of zero and an offset of 50. I chose these numbers from my landscape photographer frame of mind. HDR is the best of both worlds and landscape. You can get the best of the bright and the best of the dark. So for my first year of imaging, I never changed my gain or offset settings. And I was wondering why my images were not really improving in my opinion. So according to the ZWO manual, HDR gives better results with longer exposures. But what is a longer exposure? Is it five minutes or is it 10 minutes or is it longer than that? Also, HDR was good in light polluted skies. So my average photo is four to five minutes. So I, and I'm definitely light polluted skies. So I figured maybe that was the right way to go. Now, Unity Gain, the manual doesn't say too much about those settings, but many folks are using them with incredible results. So back in September, it looked like I was gonna have a couple of clear nights in a row. It was a good time to test and compare both settings. On each night, I took 40 four minute subs on hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, and sulfur two at negative 10 degrees Celsius. And I processed them side by side until I had a single stacked image for each night. What I noticed was first, the raw data on the unity gain appeared to be much brighter. And this is my unity gain version right here. And you can see that it is definitely much brighter. But the HDR appeared to have greater contrast. Both images are good, both images are usable. See, and if we zoom in on each of these, and just take a closer look. Let's zoom. And you can see them here at the same size. They're both good images. Uh, this one has a little bit more contrast in it. You know, you can see right here in this area versus over here, but this one's brighter. So now what I needed to do was to do some research as to what the numbers meant. And I found several great articles online, and I'm gonna show one to you here. And it's one that was written back in September of 2017. And it's a fantastic article. I'll, uh, I'll post where you can find them down below as at this time my links aren't exactly working, but hopefully they will be soon. And someone in Cloudbreak Art, um, Optics, uh, let's see, it's a John Minnick, he wrote five articles breaking down an image from pixel to pixel. And this is definitely a must read for every astrophotographer out there. I found it extremely eye-opening. But I'm gonna paraphrase this article to some degree. And let's see, they point out that each image is composed of an array of pixels that gather incoming light and converts the information into an image. Well, we all kind of know that. And each pixel, pixel should be thought of as a well or bucket. So picture this as one pixel, okay? And they use the analogy of leaving a bucket, which is what we're gonna call that pixel now, outside overnight during a light rain. And over time, that bucket is going to fill with raindrops. Now the raindrops are actually gonna be our photons. And 
each bucket is a pixel. So imagine the rain is filling this bucket here with photons. We are gathering our light. All right. In astrophotography, we gather photons, yet a pixel is based on a collection of electrons. Now, if you leave your camera shutter open for, let's say, four minutes, and you gather four minutes worth of electrons in each bucket or pixel, and then at the end of four minutes, the bucket is then drained and ready for the next frame. The number of electrons drained determines the intensity or brightness of that pixel. More electrons, the more pixels. So the more you fill it, the brighter it's going to be. Now, what if we take an image that's too long and the bucket overfills? We lose data and we call that blowing an image out, which we have all done on Orion in his trapezium. So we need to find the perfect image length to get the electrons to the top of the bucket, but not to spill over the bucket. And keep in mind that all of our cameras have a different pixel size from the manufacturer. So we all have different bucket sizes and they fill up at different rates. And with the different bucket sizes collecting different pixel sizes, you want to select a camera that has the best quantum efficiency. Now this is something I didn't know about and, and just kind of glazed over this one thing, but the quantum efficiency is the QE value of our camera. And this is how effective the well or our bucket is collecting electrons. And you want to aim for a camera that has the highest QE value. Well, my ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome camera has a QE peak size of 60%. So the bucket, I can only fill up to 60%. The rest is just wasted space that the efficiency of the camera just won't allow me to do anything with it. Let's jump ahead to their part three of the article. The bucket can also be in shortened. So when we shorten our bucket, that is because we increased our gain or also ISO if we're working with a DSLR. And a shorter bucket can fill faster. Well, that makes sense. It doesn't have as much volume as this other bucket does. So your camera specs will tell you what your pixel full well depth is. And for the ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome pro cool, that full well value is 20,000 electrons. So the most that I can get into this bucket is 20,000 electrons. And by increasing the gain to this bucket, I am shortening it and I'm allowing fewer electrons to fill it. This also means that a longer exposure could blow out an image by overfilling the bucket faster and wasting our data. Now that we kind of know what gain is, it's shortening our bucket so we can get more pixels in it faster. So you can see how a shorter exposure would be brighter. Let's think about what offset is. Offset is nothing more than putting a random number at the bottom of your bucket. We're just going to fill it with some dirt or whatever. And this could be any number. And this is because we don't want to have any half electron values. You can't cut an electron in half. It's physically not possible. So if the camera is reading 0.5 electrons, it adds I have my offset set at 50, so it will add 50, making the electron number 50. And it will round up to the nearest whole number. So if I had a half, it would probably be 51 electrons. And this eliminates us having zero electrons in our bucket, which you never want zero because that's just a blank image. And this also fills the bucket space, so you have a factor in that how long you can take an image. So if I put in let's say 50 pixels down here, then I can just get so many more in here, plus I've got that QE value up here that's squishing me down. So I've got to find this number of pixels that I can get in that would be the optimal length of time for me to take my photos. Now I'm sure there's a lot of math out there that can tell you how to do this, but I tend to do things through trial and error and try things out. Plus every target in the sky has a different brightness value to it. So it is something that I just have to use a little bit of trial and error. Now there is some trade-off. 
by increasing your gain, it costs you the lower dynamic range. And it is suggested to increase the offset just enough so you don't have any zero pixels. So I'm probably going to lower my gain down to probably 10, you know, because there's no point in me having 50. I was just wasting. All right, so I'll leave a link below or a set of directions on how to find these this five-part article series. But he's got one, and I've only got through four on my screen. But he breaks things down in this terrific easy to understand way of how everything comes into play with our cameras. And if you can uh, take some time and read this and understand it just a little bit, your images will be just that far ahead. I mean, he even breaks down in part four about our ADC levels, if you are curious about that, which I have been curious about that. And maybe we'll talk about that in another, another tutorial here. But what I want to do is uh, let's compare my images here. Let's look and see what is more eye-pleasing, and then you decide which image you would want to further process. We can uh, shorten the exposure, shorter exposures at higher gain, or longer exposures at lower gain. And I guess this also depends on how good your camera mount is, what the guiding's like, what the sky conditions are like, and then you decide what you want to sacrifice. All right, so back again at these images, you can see there's not a whole lot of difference other than the higher gain is clearly a brighter image. But let's zoom in even more. I'm curious, what does my noise data look like? All right, let's get them about the same spot there. Okay, so this one has zero gain and a 50 offset. And you can see I've definitely got some more contrast in here. I've got darker pixels. I do have one hot pixel there. And over here, this image overall quality tone is definitely brighter. And I am not really seeing the hot pixel that I've got over here. Let's see that because it's brighter, my stars are a little bit more they're a little bit more defined. So that looks good. But let's go now, and I'm gonna shrink these up. And I have taken my uh, hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, and sulfur two, and I have processed them up to this point, where they are now a single image combined as sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen, as the basic Hubble palette. And they have been Let's see, they've been color corrected. They've had the automatic background extraction done to them. And they've had the, I think it's the SNR, where it removed the green cast of them. And both images actually look really good. Now, the zero gain one does have a reddish tint, but I think that'll go away with some further processing. But both of them have a little bit of just a brighter edges around here, but let's just concentrate on what's here in the center. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Now the one with the gain at 139, an offset of 21, that looks really sharp. And this is just 40 images at four minutes long taken inside the city limits. So basically this is my backyard. And we've got this one over here, both the same size. And what I see here is some more contrast. So I've got some darker, more definition in this image over this image. But this one is still fantastic. So I'm at a toss up, which is gonna be better? So I guess this one is gonna be left up to you and your camera as whether you want to go with no gain or some gain. Some gain will make things brighter for you uh, no gain will make things have more contrast. I think if you had more time, uh, whether it be a longer exposure or more hours worth of uh, taking images, you could really make this uh, HDR version pop out really nicely. But if you're on a shorter time schedule or you, let's say you live near an airport like some folks do, and four minutes is all you can get before an airplane decides to photobomb you then I would definitely stick with the 139 and offset of 21. In fact, I'm kind of thinking for my backyard for right now, 
I'm going to stick with this 139 and 21 combination. But when I go out to my dark site, I'll probably switch over to this uh, HDR version, which is the gain of zero and an offset of 50. But I'll probably drop my offsets now that I know what they are down to about 10. Because So that's what I've got for you today. I just wanted to show you the difference between two photos taken at two different gain settings and give you a little bit of a background of what gain and offset mean. It was definitely an eye opener for me because I really didn't understand the concept. I can say that I definitely wish that I had read this article before purchasing a camera because now there's other qualities that I want to consider, you know, like this QE value that was new to me and uh, how big the full well depth is for the cameras. Now all those camera specs are found on the manufacturer's website and you can pull them from there and yeah, that's it. I mean, just run with it and uh, this is your personal opinion. Yeah, so take a moment, check out Cloudbreak Optics, read their five part series and stroll their blogs some more because there's a lot of really great articles in there that I'm going through systematically and reading them all and they are written in a way that anybody can understand them. I mean, if you start at part one, if I had started at part three, I would have been in deep trouble trying to understand the analogy. But using the idea of having a bucket and raindrops, that just totally worked for me and helped me understand it. So I'm uh, grateful for those articles. So you decide which gain works best for you and run with it. And I would love to see your comments below. If you have an idea for another video, take a moment and leave me a note below or send me a message and I will do my best to answer that question. And if I'm able to, I will also make you a video explaining the answer. So thank you so much for your time. This is Amy with Amy Astro and I am wishing you all some very clear skies.